a frog's flashy colors. This wonderful buffalo herd. A pronghorn's grass-cutting teeth. Or this little guy's paddle-shaped back feet. As different as they are, they all have something in common. They're all adaptations, those specialized characteristics or features that help animals to survive in and make the most of where they live. Hello, my name is Paul Fuqua, and I'm a naturalist. I spend a lot of my time outside studying animals, and I've come here to learn about some of the adaptations that help these bison, or as they're often called, buffalo, and other animals survive. The word adaptation sounds complex, but it's easy enough to understand. Basically, when scientists talk about how this buffalo or these crabs are well adapted, what they're talking about, what's really important, is survival. All of our many animal neighbors, these feisty parrots in the steaming jungle, fish in the ocean deep, or mighty polar bears in the freezing Arctic, or any other critter, are faced with a challenge of surviving. To do that, to survive, all animals need certain basics, such as food, water, a climate they can live in, and a place to raise their young. And over the millions of years they've been around, animals have developed many specialized characteristics that help them to meet these and their other needs. Scientists call these specialized characteristics or features adaptations, and it's largely due to them that animals can survive just about anywhere on planet Earth. Take, for example, these fine fellows I found sunning themselves in their wetland home. These turtles live in a watery world, and several important adaptations help them to survive in it. Look, for example, at this little guy's back feet. Paddle-shaped and with skin between the toes, such feet are an adaptation that helps our friend to scoot through the water with the greatest of ease. And notice how both this turtle's eyes and his nostrils are located at the top of his head. This arrangement is an adaptation that lets turtles both breathe and see what's going on while keeping most of their bodies safely underwater and out of sight. And that's a very good thing to do when you have neighbors, such as this hungry old gator, set on making a meal out of you. When it comes to surviving, color counts. Take, for example, this little flatfish. Look at how well its colors match those of the sand it's resting on. The flatfish blends in so well, it's almost invisible. Scientists call such blending camouflage, and it's an important adaptation when it comes to keeping our little buddy from ending up as some bigger fish's dinner. Now here's a little critter that benefits from what scientists call warning coloration, another kind of adaptation involving color. Our flashy friend here, a poisonous, foul-tasting frog from South America, uses color to be seen rather than to hide. Such frogs have bowl markings and bright colors that warn birds and other would-be predators to leave them alone. When it comes to our animal neighbors, you can tell lots about them by watching how they chew their food. That's because over the millions of years animals have roamed the earth, their teeth have adapted to the many different foods available to them. 
This prairie living pronghorn provides a fine example of this kind of adaptation. Pronghorns are herbivores or plant eaters, and their teeth are beautifully adapted to their grassy diet. Here, for example, is a pronghorn jaw I found. Look at these sharp edged cutting teeth at the jaw's front. They're perfect for slicing through tough prairie grass. And here at the back are these broad, flat topped teeth. They're ideal for grinding up a mouthful of grass before swallowing it. Together, these two specialized teeth help pronghorns to get plenty of nourishment from their grassland home. Now here's a badger. Like pronghorns, badgers live in grasslands. Unlike them, however, badgers are fierce carnivores or meat eaters. And prairie dogs and other such small animals are their dinner of choice. And here's a badger's skull. Look at these large dagger-like teeth. Badgers use them to grab and kill their prey. They then use these sharp side teeth to grind up their catch before swallowing it. Flesh-eating badgers and grass-eating pronghorns. As different as the two are, thanks largely to the specialized way their teeth have adapted, both can get the food they need in their grassland home. Along with physical adaptations, such as paddle-shaped swimming feet, bold eye-catching markings, and sharp grass-cutting teeth, animals' behavior can also adapt. Look, for example, at this school of fish on the go, these ever-busy little fiddler crabs, this flock of hungry shorebirds, and these mighty buffalo. They all provide great examples of how animals' behavior, in this case herding together in a group, can adapt in ways that increase survival. Take our friends here. Together, their combined eyes, ears, and noses are always on the lookout for hungry bears, wolves, and other such dangers. Such group watchfulness increases the chance that the herd will notice any threat and thus improves the odds that all its members will survive unharmed. It's important to understand that adaptations, such as this little guy's paddle-shaped back feet, happen naturally by chance and not by choice. And if, such as these specialized killing teeth, or these buffaloes herding behavior, the adaptations help animals to survive better, they are likely to become more common as they are passed on from one generation to the next. A badger's flesh-ripping teeth, a turtle's webbed feet, buffalo's herding behavior, and a frog's flashy colors. As different as all these are, they're all adaptations. Those many and different specialized characteristics that help animals of all kinds to survive in and make the most of where they live. Well, now we've seen some of the many different ways animals can adapt, let's play a short quiz game and see how much you can remember. The quiz game is fun, and it's also easy to play. I'm going to ask you five questions. I'll begin by thinking about something that has to do with adaptations. Then I'll give you some clues. After you hear them, decide what I'm thinking about, and then write your answer. That's all there is to the quiz game, so let's get started. Here's question number one. 
I'm thinking about what scientists call animals, such as this little pronghorn that have broad grinding teeth and that eat plants. What kind of animals am I thinking about? The answer is herbivores. Herbivores, such as our friend here, are plant-eating animals. Question 2. This time I'm thinking about a kind of adaptation that poison frogs use and that warns predators to leave them alone. What am I thinking about? The answer is warning coloration, or the use of bold markings and colors to warn predators away. Question 3. Now I'm thinking about a word that describes the specialized features or characteristics that help animals to survive. What word am I thinking about? The answer is adaptations. Adaptations are specialized features that help animals and other living things survive. Now we're going to play the quiz game a little differently. For the next two questions, I'll read you a sentence and then you'll supply its missing last word. Here's the first sentence. Adaptations happen by chance and not by... The answer is choice. Adaptations happen by chance and not because animals want them to. And here's the last question. Once again, you're to supply the missing word. Now here's the sentence. Some adaptations are physical, while others involve... The answer is behavior. Some adaptations, such as the way some animals herd together into groups, involve behavior. Well, that ends our quiz game and our look at how adaptations help animals to survive in and make the most of where they live.